Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2. We're now ready to begin ebonising the two beach parts of this urn. But in the time between when I finished turning this and now, part of the top here has cracked. It's obviously still been a little wet up here and that's cracked. So, I'll need to do some reshaping of this here in order to remove that and provide a base for the finial to go on. But the first thing we'll do is we'll ebonise this because I'm interested to see just how well this is going to ebonise if at all. So the first thing I'll do is I'll give this a good sand again. The grain has raised a bit since I finished turning it. smooth finish with the sanding now. So, beach isn't very high in tannin which is essential for an ebonizing reaction using iron acetate or steel wool that's been dissolved in vinegar. So I'm going to add a solution of tannin to this and let that soak in first before putting on my first coat of the iron acetate. So I have tannin solution here that I prepared myself. Um, some people use tea to make a tannin solution. I didn't use tea because I don't drink tea and I didn't really want to have to buy any. So I made this using something else that I'm hoping is going to be better. It should be more concentrated this stuff than just using something like tea. So I'm going to brush on some of this first then I'll leave it for 20 minutes or half an hour or, or so to let it soak in and dry and then I'll put on the first coat of iron acetate and we should see an ebonizing reaction fairly quickly after that. Okay, some time has passed now and that solution has soaked into the wood. So I'll add some iron acetate now and hopefully this will ebonize really well. Okay, that's already starting to darken. 15-20 minutes again, that should start to go uh, a good bit darker. So this is an experiment, I've never done this before so I'm hoping it's going to work the way that I think it should. We'll just have to wait and see. Well it's been about five to ten minutes and I don't know about you but I think my secret mixture works. It's gone really dark black up at the top and it lightens up a bit with the openness in the grain pattern around the white part of the urn and then as the grain tightens again it goes back to being really dark black uh, and that's a, a beautiful effect that has come out there. It's still very wet now so you can see a lot of shine um, as that dries it will go slightly duller and slightly lighter but I'm hoping again that when I when I seal the wood and when I finish it that it will go this really nice dark colour again and oh, the, the grain is I don't know I'm really quite impressed I wasn't 
expecting this to turn out as well as I was hoping, but I'm really quite impressed with this. Another 10 to 15 minutes later as it's been drying, you can see it's darkened even more, so this process really is working. It's still a lot wetter than the side that's been sitting uh, underneath the the moisture has obviously been running down to the bottom through gravity. Um, but I'm really happy with how this process is turning out so far. I'll leave it a while longer to really dry up and then I'll give it a sand and see how the sanding affects it. It might not need a, another application of this, it might just need to be finished. Uh, but if the sanding does cause light spots then I can apply a little bit more as needed. It's just a case of waiting now for the reaction to complete and for the, the wood to dry. Okay, so I've left it now for four hours. It's dried and I've sanded it with 320 and 400 grit because the grain did raise a, a little bit down here. So it's lovely and smooth again. I've got a a nice uniform colour over the whole piece now. Um, as it dries it does go a lot lighter so it's more a sort of a blue black rather than a black black. So I think I'll give it one more coat and I'll let that sink in and dry overnight and in the morning I'll see um, I'll see how the colour is and if the grain is raised again I might need to give it another little light sand, um, but I think it won't be ready for finish in the morning. I like how it's really brought out the ripples in the grain through. You can see the grain change direction. That was the tannin solution that I've added there. Again, I'll let that soak in for a little while. And once it's been absorbed, I'll put on another coat of the iron acetate. Right, it's morning now and the piece has pretty much dried off and I'm really happy with the colouring that I've got here. It's, it's uniform and the grain is still really jumping out so it feels really smooth as well. The grain hasn't raised again since I sanded it the first time so I don't think I'll sand it again because I don't want to end up making patches in the stain. So we'll apply some finish and see what the end result will be.
polished and I have to say it is looking pretty good. It's turned out better than I hoped to be honest. I was worried that this process wouldn't work very well on beach but using the the tannin solution that I made up it has worked really well. Uh, I prefer this to ebonizing lacquer. I've seen the lacquer used and it makes it look like it's not wood anymore. It looks like it's just been spray painted and then has a, a glossy finish to it. But with this you can still see all the grain of the wood and it looks gorgeous. Okay, so I've taken off that part of the tenon and sat it down into the foot and it fits well in that tenon. And I've decided I'm going to glue the rim onto the top of the iron. So what I'll do is I'll glue these three pieces together now. Um, and while that's curing I can work on ebonizing the lid. It has cracked however, it's obviously dried. A little bit so I'm going to reshape this and uh, make it a bit smaller so that it'll look a bit better on top of the iron. First thing I'll do is turn away the wood until this crack disappears and then I'll be able to see what I have left and reshape it in such a way that it will fit nicely on top of the iron. Uh, I'm going to remove this sharp edge here as well and have that more rounded to match the bead on top of the iron. now I've taken it off and I've sat it on top of the urn just so I can have a, a look at it and I like the, the shape that it's got. So what I'm going to do now is because I need to ebonize this entire thing and I don't want to get the solution all over my chuck I'm going to bore an 8 mil hole in here um, so that I can put the worm screw in and turn it around and that can be held in the chuck and I can ebonize this whole thing. Uh, that hole doesn't matter anyway because once it's ebonized I'll be boring a bigger hole in there for a mortise for the finial that will go on. It'll be the exact same process again with ebonizing. I'll saturate this with the tannin solution first and give that a while to soak in and dry 
and then I'll add the iron acetate solution after. The pea seems to have dried so I'll add the iron acetate now. Again, just let that dry and allow the reaction to happen. It's been a few hours now and the solution has dried and I'm happy with the colour and the grain has it raised. It's lovely and smooth so I'll apply finish. That's the lid finished and polished now and again you can see there's some stunning grain coming through the ebonizing as well. So the final thing that we need to do is bore a 3 quarter inch hole in the top of the lid that will be the mortise for the finial. And here we have the finished piece. Now this really was an experiment with ebonizing, that was the purpose for this whole project and I was nervous going into this because I've read a lot of mixed things about ebonizing with vinegar and steel wool and depending on the kind of wood that you use that it doesn't go black or it will be patchy or that sort of thing. And I'm really pleased with the, the finish that I've got and I think it's all down to that tannin solution that I prepared. I did try some uh, scrap off cuts of beech with just the iron acetate and it didn't go black, it just went a sort of an old uh, driftwood sort of grey colour. It wasn't very impressive, it certainly wasn't what I was looking for. So the, the tan solution being put on first and then the iron acetate has really brought out this really nice dark black finish. You can see as well that the grain has remained. That's why I preferred the idea of this rather than using a lacquer. Because I've seen sometimes the lacquer will just cover the grain. You can still see a gorgeous grain pattern there. So, I think it's been a success overall. It's my first urn. Um, I'll definitely make a few more. And I'll definitely experiment more with ebonizing. Um, for the likes of finials as well. Now, speaking of finials, I have something special in mind for this. Because I've ebonized this and it's black, uh, I need a finial that's really going to complement the black and so I bought some of this this is pewter you may have seen the video that I did where I smelted down some scrap lead and made a pen black and turned a pen that got mixed reviews some people were quite uh, well, outraged by the fact that I had used lead uh, because of the toxic quality. I wasn't worried about that being a plumber. I, I know and understand lead and the risks involved in using it. 
and the safety precautions were taken when working with it as far as smelting and turning and sealing the finished pen. Uh, but I used lead because first of all my plumber I, I had it on hand and it was an experiment to see how it would turn. It turned really well and so I didn't want to buy pewter without having first tried and, and seen how it would turn on my lathe with my tools but it worked with the lead and so it will work with the pewter and no one will be able to say that it's, uh, that it's dangerous, it's toxic, you shouldn't be doing that. They'll probably still say it's dangerous or something like that but I think that uh, a nice pewter finial on top of here will really make each other stand out. So, in my next video, part 3 of this project, I'll cast uh, a blank out of pewter, similar to a pen blank, it'll be about an inch square by uh, 4 to 6 inches tall. I'll cast that blank out of the pewter and I will turn it and attach it to this arm. So. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you haven't seen the video of me turning the urn itself, then go back and check that out. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for taking the time to follow me and the things that I do. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button, check out my other videos, and keep an eye out for the next video that I'll do where I'll make this interesting pewter video. I'm excited to see how well this is going to polish up. The lead polished up quite well, but lead will tarnish, the pewter shouldn't tarnish, so I'm excited to, to go and try this. But yeah, thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, leave me a comment with what you think, and share my uh, video as well, if you liked it. Thanks very much.